Now, the final effort to repeal Obamacare, or at least parts of it, has uh, indeed failed. Now, the Senate held votes early into the morning to try and pass what they called a skinny repeal of Obamacare. So what it would do is that essentially remove several things. Um, not most of it, just some of the things, uh, I, th I guess in an effort to sabotage the bill. Now, what they wanted to remove was the individual mandate, the employer mandate, uh, and they also wanted to delay a tax on medical devices. Now, they tried to get rid of this, and how'd the vote turn out? Well, it turned out uh, very, very closely, 49 to 51. So this was a very, very close vote. Very close. Um, skin of their teeth, man. Now, uh, there were three Republican defections, uh, and they were Suzanne Collins, uh, Lisa Murkowski, and John McCain. So, surprisingly, John McCain. Now, look, I know a lot of people right now, they're like, oh my god, John McCain. He is, he is the, the, the rebel. Uh, what, what do they call him? The, uh, <laughs> uh, maverick. There you go. He's, he's the maverick. He voted against his party. He bucked the GOP. He delivered such a brave vote. No, not buying it. Uh, look, I guess he, he does get some credit for defeating the skinny repeal, but you got to remember he voted to advance the repeal and replacement of Obamacare, and he also voted for Trump care that would kick 22 million people off the insurance. So I'm not going to give a lot of credit to John McCain, although he actually did um, vote the right way this time. Um, but I think a lot more credit should go to Suzanne Collins and Lisa Murkowski. So these are two women who were never really in favor of any of the Obamacare plans, uh, the repeal and replace plans, uh, plans put forward by the GOP. Okay. They're like, hey, man, this plan sucks. I'm not going to vote for it. I'm not going to vote for Trump Care 1.0 or 2.0 or 3.0. These plans all suck. I mean, look at the CBO scores. First 24 million people, then 22 million people. Not going to vote for it. And I'm not going to vote for a skinny repeal. So these two women were actually uh, consistently against this bill. These were the consistent no votes. And so I do believe that deserves a lot of credit. More credit than John McCain. Even though everybody's like, oh, John McCain, John McCain. I remember John McCain voted to kick 22 million people off their insurance. That's after getting uh, diagnosed with brain cancer and going and getting health, the health care that he, he needs. So he gets the health care that he needs to treat his cancer, but he still votes to kick 22 million people off their insurance. Well, ha what happens when they get cancer? Well, he'll just tell them, uh, like he told somebody in uh, Arizona who had a similar situation, they had cancer, you just need to move out. Go to somewhere that actually has insurance because I'm not going to help you. So, <laughs> there we go. Now, so the skinny repeal, dead. Obamacare, the ACA, saved. And of course, how was President Trump dealing with this? Well, it turns out he was not very happy. Now, uh, he actually tweeted, Three Republicans and 48 Democrats let the American people down. As I said from the beginning... Let him plop, let Obamacare implode, then deal. Watch. <laughs> okay, no. Letting the American people down would be eliminating their insurance. Uh, letting their health insurance, their health care implode. That's letting the American people down. The American people actually want you to do something on health care. They actually want you to fix health care. To fix the issues inherent with Obamacare. And if you look, there's actually a majority of the American people that want you to expand Medicare for all. So, you know, you're going to go the petty route, the petulant route, like the child that you are. And you're going to say, no, let it implode. Let it blow up in their face. This isn't a fucking business deal, dude. This isn't like, oh, if I don't get my way, I'll play a little hardball. No, 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 no. That's not what this is about. This is, you're dealing with people's health care this is life and death stuff and donald trump is such a callous dick that he's like no 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 no. I, i'm just gonna let it implode and then if people die then the democrats have to come and give me a win that's what this is about he's such a he's such an asshole <laughs> okay 
No, see, here's the thing. What would have happened with this skinny repeal? Had this gone, uh, you know, past the uh, Senate and actually gone past the House and on Trump's desk, he would have signed it uh, almost certainly because he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know what this actually means. Now, what it would have done is that 16 million people would have immediately lost their insurance. Gone. Premiums would have risen by 20% a year. Okay. And also, by removing the individual mandate, you will destabilize the markets, which would have ended up, uh, you know, putting Obamacare, uh, the ACA, into a death spiral, which would have ended up raising premiums even more and kicking more people off insurance, the people that need it the most. That's what you were saying yes to. I don't think you understand. Either or, either you do understand what's in this bill, but you're such a callous asshole who doesn't care about anyone but himself, and that's completely believable, we are dealing with Donald Trump after all, that he would let millions of people get hurt so that he could get a political win. He's a politician to the core, man. Now, <clears throat> what I would want to do is, look, we should take the opportunity to actually, I don't know, do something that helps people. I mean, look, let's look at where the GOP is wrong. And that includes people like Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski, who actually did go to save the ACA. But the whole approach from the conservative side when it comes to health care is wrong. They focus on, well, how much is it going to cost? That's not what we're, we should be talking about when it comes to health care. How much is it going to cost? That should be a secondary um, thing that we should talk about, okay? That's a secondary um, consideration. What health care should do, what we should focus on is how many people can we cover and how many people can we help? with health care because like look it's going to cost money and that's their main argument oh we can't do better health care because it's going to cost money or obamacare is going to cost money or this is medicare is it's going to cost so much money again secondary consideration because it turns out humans cost money diseases treating diseases cost money it's going to cost resources but you know what it's the government's job to make sure that their citizenry is healthy and not dying off and you do that by letting them have access to health care. And that's actually something that a majority of the American people believe in. It's not some libby lib dream, right? No, most of the American people think, no, I think it is the government's job to make sure that the citizenry is healthy and that they have access to health care. In fact, according to a recent Pew Research survey, over 60% of Americans say the government should be responsible for ensuring health care coverage for all Americans. Not the only ones who could afford it, not the top 1%, not the rich, and not just people with pre-existing conditions, but everybody. That's fairly clear. Now, the American people have spoken. Are you going to listen? Of course not. Now, that cost, look, the cost should be, again, secondary. We're not a poor country. I could understand if, like, no, we, we actually really can't afford it. There's not enough money in the treasury. Like, we got to figure out something. Okay, well, we'll figure out something. But we're not in that situation. The country is massively wealthy. We have more billionaires. Look, Jeff Bezos was like a, the richest man in the world, at least for one day. We have more billionaires than everyone, and they have a majority of the money. We're not poor. And look, we're spending billions of dollars on occupying and bombing other countries right now. We're still in Afghanistan. We're still dropping bombs on ISIS, on Iraq, on Syria. We dropped so many bombs on Syria that we ran out of Syria. Why is the question not, how can we afford it? Uh, why, why is the question, why, you know, how can we afford it when it comes to healthcare, but not when it comes to bombing other countries? We never ask how much it's going to cost. No, no, those bombs, those are millions of dollars a piece. These missiles and bombs that we're launching, no problem. But when it comes to somebody's health care, or even when it comes to transgender surgery and uh, reassignment surgery in the military, these people are like, oh my God, it costs so much. We can't afford it. No, it's bullshit. So uh, now with that said, I want to give you the details on what exactly happened to this vote. Now, yesterday I reported that the skinny repeal was actually very unpopular among the Republicans. Now, you had some people that ended up voting for this bill. But they didn't really want this bill. It, it's a strange situation. So I want to go and give you some quotes here. Now, you had uh, Bob Corker here who uh, said, hey, man, 
uh, this is not what we wanted. What this really is, is that it's just aiming for the lowest common denominator. Basically, we want to look like we're doing something uh, so that our constituents don't get pissed off. We just want to look like we're doing something. No, okay. Now, uh, this is according to the New York Times. Before rolling out the new legislation, Senate leaders had to deal with a rebellion from Republican senators who demanded ironclad assurances that the legislation would never become law. So let me get this straight. 49 Republicans vote for a bill that a lot of them were like, I don't actually want this to be law. Well, why'd you vote for it, dumbass? Why? It doesn't make any sense. Now, you had uh, uh, McCain and Lindsey Graham, uh, as well as Ron Johnson from Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. <laughs> I'm sorry, I find that humorous. Uh, they insisted that House leaders promised that the bill would not be enacted. He said, uh, Mr. Uh, Lindsey Graham said, I'm not going to vote for a bill that is terrible policy and horrible politics just because we have to get something done. He, call, he also called the bill a disaster and a fraud. <laughs> That's pretty clear from Lindsey Graham. Okay. Uh, now, but again, it, it, Lindsey Graham still voted for this. But only after receiving insurance from the House Speaker, uh, Paul Ryan, uh, that they would negotiate. They would bring it to a conference. Still, there's a lot of people that were like, we don't trust the House. What's to say that if we pass this piece of shit, that the House isn't just going to go, hey, you know what? We'll pass it too and fuck it. We'll give it to Trump. That's actually consideration. Now, Paul Ryan said, if moving forward requires a conference committee, that is something the House is willing to do. The reality, however, is that repealing and replacing Obamacare still ultimately requires the Senate to produce 51 votes for an actual plan. Uh, and this was not a plan. Which explains, actually, the reason that John McCain voted no. It's not that he was principled uh, and was against it because, oh my God, so many people are going to lose their health care. No, no, no. He, he's just like, it's not a real plan. Like, we're not even doing anything. We're not repealing this. We're not replacing this. What are we voting for? This is ridiculous. Now, again, this had, again, nothing to do with health care. Um, and, but it still had the ability of becoming law, uh, cause Paul Ryan left open the possibility that the house could still pass this. And again, that was the reason that McCain voted against it. Uh, and McCain actually, he's a guy that likes order. Now here's a vote. Uh, here, here's a quote from him after the vote. He said, I've stated time and time again, that one of the major failures of Obamacare was that it was ran through Congress by Democrats on a strict party line basis without a single Republican vote. We must now return to the correct way of legislating and send the bill back to committee, hold hearings, receive input from both sides, heed the recommendations of the nation's governors, and produce a bill that finally delivers affordable health care for the nation or, or for the American people. We must do the hard work our citizens expect of us and deserve. So that's why McCain voted against this. He's like, well, this wasn't bipartisan enough. Uh, and also, we like to do things... I like to do things by the rules. The whole process of budget reconciliation and all the bullshit that they did to try to do this, uh, force this repeal and this repeal and replace plan well, didn't sit right with McCain. He's like, no, 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 let's I, I, go to the rules. Let's, let's follow the rules, follow the rules. Now, as far as uh, his criticism that Obamacare didn't get a Republican vote, well, that's because Republicans had no desire to work with the Democrats at all. And that's despite President Obama and the Democrats bending over backwards to try to court Republican votes. They weren't interested because, look, for them, the status quo was awesome. Obamacare, uh, for all of its flaws, has a very progressive taxation system, which means rich people pay more to help subsidize people who can't afford insurance plans and, you know, to expand Medicaid. The original plan was anybody who's broke uh, can just be covered through Medicaid covered by the federal government. Now, the court ruined that and said, no, no, you have to expand it. And a lot of Republican governors were like, fuck you. We don't care about our poor people. We're going to play politics and we're not going to expand Medicaid. Okay. So that's how that worked. Now, again, they were not interested in helping out with uh, the ACA. 
So, and, and look, it's because Americans dying without health insurance or from not having access to affordable health insurance wasn't our problem. It's not, it's not a problem. Not interested. Not, a, not gonna help. Status quo is awesome. Still, it is actually pretty funny that most Republican senators uh, were actually not hoping that this, w uh, uh, that this bill would even become law, that this would pass. They still voted for it, but they're like, man, I really do not want this. <laughs> uh, you have uh, Senator Michael Rounds here. I've got a quote from, he's a Republican from South Dakota uh, and who had built a, an insurance business in his home state. He said he was concerned that markets may collapse if this bill would ever take effect, but still voted for it uh, because he said it may very well be a good vehicle to get us into conference, but you got to make sure that it's not so good that the House simply passes it rather than going to conference. So they're afraid and they don't trust Paul Ryan and House Republicans to not just send it through. You also have Representative Mark Walker, Republican of North Carolina, and the chairman of the Conservative Republican Study Committee, saying that, hey man, this bill is ugly to the bone. I voted for it. I'm going to support this. Um, but I'm only going to support it so we can go to conference. Interesting. Now, Mark Meadows, uh, who's actually one of the worst people, uh, he's like, no, no, no. Uh, Actually, this bill doesn't kick people in the face enough. He said this was a non-starter uh, that is a non-starter bill that has gotten so skinny that it doesn't even resemble a repeal. So he didn't want to go to conference. He's just like, this isn't good enough. This is not a full repeal. I wanted a full repeal. I want to kick poor people in the face. I want to take away everybody's insurance. So, eh, not in favor of it. Now, some senators, uh, even some senators who voted for it, and again, a lot of them did, uh, said that this, look, this bill is disastrous. Under this bill, of course, the insurance markets would become destabilized since only sick people would buy insurance because you would remove the individual mandate. And then, of course, if you do that, you get a death spiral in which premiums will end up soaring and uh, more and more unaffordable for people with pre-existing conditions. So a lot of these Republicans, they knew that. They knew it was DOA, and they knew it was all a show. And now, of course, since the show is over, it's time to move on. In fact, I've got a quote from Mitch McConnell. He says, I regret our efforts were simply not enough this time. Now, I imagine many of our colleagues on the other side are celebrating. Actually, we're not. Um, us on the other side, we're like, okay, good. We saved the ACA. Now let's go further. We actually need to do more. But he says they're probably pretty happy about all this, but the American people are hurting and they need relief. Now, it's now I think it's appropriate to ask, what are their ideas? It'll be interesting to see what they suggest as a way forward. We'll see how the American people feel about their ideas. Hmm. Well, it's kind of funny that he asked, oh, what's our ideas? Well, our ideas are the ideas of the American people. And what, I what ideas are those? Medicare for all. 57% of Americans favor, favor a government-run single-payer healthcare system. That's an idea. Medicare is the most popular program, um, uh, most popular healthcare government program. Medicaid's not far behind. Okay, so that's one idea. Or adding a public option into the ACA. That's, all, that's another good idea. How about favoring uh, the government uh, and allowing them to negotiate drug prices with pharmaceutical companies. That's also very popular. Overall, it looks like the American people are in favor of progressive ideas. Now, whether the Democratic Party actually picks up and runs with those progressive ideas, some of them are. Some of them are coming around to them. Others are giving lip service. And most of the rest, we don't necessarily know. But uh, look, progressive ideas with the American people, when you're talking about the people, over or overwhelmingly more popular than conservative ideas. Now, let me give you an example. The recent Trump care, right? That had a 20% approval. Medicare for all, 57% approval. The ACA, which actually isn't a liberal idea, but a lot of people think that it is, wrongly so, has a 55% approval. Hmm, I wonder what's more popular. 
I wonder what direction the American people are going. But anyway, uh, so look, the end result here is that the ACA, it looks like it's safe to say that it's, it's going to be around. Okay. So the job next is to not only fix it, but expand it. Now, Bernie Sanders and, and John Conyers have both introduced bills to expand Medicare to everybody. Okay. Now, that's a great idea that's starting to get more and more support from Democrats, uh, and we need to continue to push that. Now, another thing that you could do in the short term is just craft in a public option, allow people to buy into a government plan whilst keeping the rest of the framework of the ACA. That's a good immediate thing as we transition over to a Medicare for all single payer system. And I can guarantee that will only increase popularity of a single payer system. If you have a functional uh, public option, now people are going to see it's that much cheaper because you don't have to spend money on uh, the advertising costs and executive bonuses. No, your money goes to care and you don't have to deal with premiums. You don't have to deal with deductibles. Uh, so it's going to be very popular. We just have to do this. And again, this can be added on to the ACA very simply. Now, I don't know what the Democratic plan is going to be. If single payer or that's going to be, I hope so. Uh, because in the end, that's the one that a majority of the American people actually want. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.